Well, it's a great pleasure uh, today to spend some time with Dr. Henry Mankin. Dr. Mankin has made so many important contributions to the field of orthopedic surgery as an outstanding clinician, as an educator, and a distinguished investigator. His career spans over 50 years, and he has taken on some of the most difficult problems in orthopedic surgery, including patients with tumors, both metastatic as well as primary bone tumors, metabolic bone diseases, and he's done some enormously important innovative research in the field of cartilage, in biology, oncology, as well as metabolic issues. As chief of the MGH, he made numerous contributions to the residency and to the program and to the education of hundreds of orthopedic surgeons. He's been president of the Orthopedic Research Society, president of the American Orthopedic Society, and also chairman of the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery. He's been president of the Musculoskeletal Tumor Society, and he is an honorary fellow of the Royal College of uh, Surgeons. Uh, Dr. Mankin, what drew you into uh, a career in medicine and perhaps uh, what made you pursue orthopedic surgery and academic orthopedic surgery? Well, I went to the University of Pittsburgh and uh, had an opportunity to see some very good people there. Um, and But it was very interesting because at the time, the students taught each other. We didn't have a great deal of faculty-student relationship. And I learned that it was important to teach each other. That was a very good thing. I went from there to the University of Chicago, and I became interested in internal medicine, gastroenterology, and then I got drafted into the United States Navy and had to go to uh, uh, Nevada to a naval ammunition depot where there was nothing for anybody to do except two things. The uh, Marines and, and the sailors hit each other and broke legs, and I had an opportunity to be a, a, great, uh, uh, <laughs> a, a great orthopedist in that respect. So you started out as a trauma surgeon. Yeah, but actually, <laughs> actually the other thing they did is that they had lady friends and I had to deliver 300 babies during that time. Okay. And I was an internist, imagine that. So why orthopedic oncology? You know, I've always done what it was necessary to do. So when I went, finished my residency, I went to Pittsburgh and I did trauma because nobody else was doing trauma. And I did tuberculosis. I went to Leech Farm and I was doing that. Uh, when I went back to joint diseases as chief, nobody was doing pediatric orthopedics, so I became a pediatric orthopedist. Uh, but when I came to Boston in 72 at Mass General, I discovered that I had brought a pediatric orthopedist, and I brought a hand surgeon, and I brought the guys to do trauma, and the only thing I could think of was the one thing that wasn't here at the time, oncology. So I became an oncologist, orthopedic oncologist. So along the lines of teaching, tell us about breakfast with Henry. Well, I started that in, in New York <clears throat> at the Hospital for Joint Diseases when I was chief there. And um, I felt that we had to get the residents communicating with each other and looking at things and talking and giving them an idea of what the world is like. When I came up here, I did the same thing. And we went to the Smith-Peterson conference room and the library, and we had breakfast together. Although they claim that they were afraid to eat breakfast because if they were eating too much, I would call on them. Ah, so the secret was don't eat. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a bit about your pioneering work in limb uh, salvaging surgery. Perhaps one of your greatest contributions to the field? Well, um, when I started to do tumor work, I was um, realized that amputations was the only thing for malignant tumors, and people were terrified of getting these things. And then I uh, remember the, the thing that the Navy 
had done for uh, 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 getting tissue, National Navy Naval Tissue Bank, and I decided maybe we ought to use allografts for uh, these patients and see if we can get them to be ambulatory and able to do things. So we started a, a, um, a tissue bank uh, where we collected uh, tissue from patients who had already given their hearts and kidneys and things like that. And we put the bones in the bank and froze them. And we used them and we actually uh, did about 1,200, 1,300 of these procedures and wrote a lot about them and talked a lot about them. And, and other people have done them, they're still doing them, and we're still doing some. Yeah. In 2006, I published my first book, Pathophysiology of Orthopedic Diseases, through the academy. We uh, had 26 cases of different diseases, and we described the history, the physical findings, the biology, and what sort of things, and I had illustrations. Then I did a second one with 32 cases, 32 different diseases, and that was also from the Academy. And the Jaffe Collection, uh, what's happening with the Jaffe Well, Henry Jaffe was a wonderful uh, pathologist at the Hospital for Joint Diseases, and I worked with him for six months, and um, we liked each other. And he was, among other things, a great pathologist, but also a spectacular collector. And he collected uh, tissue from patients from 1917 on to about 1974. And when he died, he willed the collection to me. We've been digitizing all the slides and all the x-rays and all the descriptions of the cases and pathology uh, uh, figures, et cetera, et cetera. And we've done about 3,000 already, and we still got some to go. But uh, the other thing that happened is that uh, uh, there's a fellow named Jakob Erdheim in Vienna who was also a great collector. And uh, in 1937, he sent his collection to Jaffe in a rug. He was trying to escape from the uh, Nazis, yes. but, yeah. and he died. And I've got the Erdheim collection, too. So what a remarkable collection of pathology. Spectacular. Well, be. And it will be available to anyone online right? to yeah. use and to resource. I think just another example, Dr. Mencken, of your dedication to teaching and to place that online and to give everyone and anyone an opportunity to use the wealth of information that's there is just another example of who you are and what you do so well. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Mankin, for joining me for this short period of time here in the Henry Mankin Conference Room. And what a wonderful opportunity this has been in speaking with Dr. Mankin. I really hope you join me, uh, the department, and your fellow colleagues uh, in making a gift uh, in Dr. Mankin's honor. Thank you.